Hi, this is Robbie from Southern California in my bird garden. And I have a question for you and I will be reading the comments. So make sure you put comments. Remember, we talked about putting a tunnel in the bird garden and I've been working away putting more flowers and plants and more bird feeders up for the birds to come in. And boy, we even saw new birds we've never seen before. Cowbirds came in, we never had them here. Well, about three weeks ago, I made a video and it does look different in three weeks from then to now that I was going to launch and decided to wait, step back, take a breath and think about what I really want to do in here and what you want me to do in here. And I'm still toying with the idea, but here is the thing. I absolutely love this. I want you to think about it. Listen to the video. Tell me what you think. Remember, it was done about three weeks ago and look at the flowers and the transformation from then to now. And also think about that. I'll be reading. Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. This is just something on the tunnel that we had talked about in Gary's garden. This is exactly where I was planning on doing the tunnel. Let me explain why. These dog crates that we got that time for free, they're not dog, well, they're kennels, that somebody was throwing out a groomer, they're all set up. So everything is going really good the way I want it. But here is the issue. It's this place that I would have a tunnel. I would probably set up a trough or totes here. Gary said he needs seven feet and it would go across. So it would be seven feet across here, and then I'd have a great big tunnel through here, and it would look out that way, so it would get pretty good sunlight. The sun is, as you can see, on that side for me right now. But I do have a dilemma. Do you see the dilemma? We'll talk about that in a second. Now, this is gonna be moved, and this is going to the other side of the yard where I feed all the birds. I don't feed them in here right now, and they know that, so they don't come to it. I do have to trim all this back. This is my pride and joy uh, brassica that I grew. Now, when it's not in flower season, seed season, it gets giant leaves and they're deep, dark green. And I use that for everything. You can use it from wraps. You can use it for stir fry. You could shred it up and put it in a salad, green drink, everything. But right now I'm leaving this. As you can see, there's bees flying all through there. The hummingbirds feed on it constantly. So for now, because I've been working through the garden and cleaning things up, trying to give it, well, a, not just tidiness. This is, this is a bird garden. I want this to be a bird sanctuary, but there's food in between. You know, I've got tomatoes. And I'm going to have peppers in here and hopefully eggplant. Don't know if I'll grow any squash in this part. I might try some down there. And I have left a lot of seed heads on different brassicas because what happens here is we've got the pollinators using the yellow flowers. Here we can walk back, look at that. Look how high it is. Like what, 10, 15 feet high? The pollinators come in, the bees, the bumblebees, the hoverflies, everybody, and they feed on the yellow flowers and so do the hummingbirds. Once they feed on them, they develop seed. Now they're getting a little bit of nectar and pollen out of this. Isn't that beautiful? See how it's, they can get inside there and get their beak in there, but there's pollen in there. If you look, you'll see it's, it's kind of yellow. It comes off a little bit. Now the other thing is it goes to seed. And once they're pollinated, these little tiny nothings turn into big seed pods. See the bees? And now the seed pods, when they're green, here's a bigger one. See how they get big very quickly? And there's another one. See in there, and they'll get bigger yet. I can think we can walk over here. That's eaten by house finches. Bush tits come in, by the way, they pick out insects. They don't eat the seeds from it. And then the goldfinches come in. They eat them at the green stage. See how big they get? And they're full of tiny seeds. They eat it throughout the entire life cycle of the seeds. They come in here and they split it open. Not yet, there's really not much in there, but tiny little nothings. And they will eat the seeds when they start to dry. So it's got a full life cycle. I had a ton of it here and I did clear it out to get my plants growing because I wanted to get some flowers for the hummingbirds. And I've got lavender and I've got different types of emu bush. But I'm leaving this part right now because they won't go back to seed. 
we won't have any more seed till later on in the year until the weather cools. And see they have weed abatement? Everybody's gotta clear their property, so what food are they gonna get? See, the hummingbird is coming right now. He came over to get seed. And I even have lemon verbena back there that's all full of these tiny flowers. And this is a big food for the goldfinches. There's tiny, tiny seeds on there. I don't even know where they are, but they come in here and they feed on this. See, and then the bees come in and they get nectar out of it and pollen. The hummingbird's not too much because look how tiny the flower is, realistically. It's a little tiny, but I'm sure they feed something and get something out of it. They seem to hover around it. So that's why I'm leaving this, but look at this. Now you think about this. There'll be a tunnel here. It will go up into the air. What I'm gonna lose, and that's what I wanted to talk about, and this is why it's really a dilemma. I sit here sometimes. And when this is clear, I'll sit with you, you can't see it now, but when it's clear, I have a beautiful eye shot of that hillside and my neighbor has planted up beautiful trees. Look at all the trees she's planted more through there to bring in the birds and the wildlife. I sit here and I watch the deer. There's really no place on the property that gets the same angle to watch the deer and I really like that yes I see coyotes and occasionally even a bobcat and I do believe one day I saw a mountain lion go through because there's kind of a trail it's very open right now because all the weeds have been cut down they do not spray there other ones do they do not they hired people and it's expensive they had one person that came in just to do the hillside five thousand dollars this is why people spray. You say, why do they use all those herbicides to get rid of the weeds? Because they can spray for what? A hundred, two, three hundred dollars, spray everything and it all dies and they rake it up. Or you can hire people and that's the dilemma. To do a whole hillside in the property could be easily $5,000. So this is why people are using it. I can't tell my neighbors what to do, but they did hire people to go through there and hand remove it because they're not gonna grow anymore. If we got a lot of rain, then the whole hillside will fill back up, kind of like what's up on top there, and then they would have to rehire. But I think we won't get enough rain or they'll just kind of do maintenance on it. So that is my dilemma here. I love this and I wanna leave my tree collared here. What do I do? Do I lose this spot here that I can look out and see the deer? Now there is a few other things we can do. Gary and I sat here this morning as I was working in the garden and cleaning things up and planting so many flowers and stuff. And I kind of threw an idea at him and he said, yep, he was thinking the same thing. Why not go outside and build it in our parking lot? Now, why did we leave all these years? I'll take a quick walk out here. See, I really like this. I work under here. This would be a tunnel. So I would lose all the light here, which is okay. I don't worry about light. But see, even here, this isn't really a spot to see past the citrus trees. This is my only spot that's sitting anywhere over there. I can see through and get a clear shot and look up and watch the deer come through. It can be in the evening, which has been many times in the evening, or early in the morning. I haven't seen a lot of deer lately. I've asked some people and they haven't seen them for a while. But years ago, when we you know, first got this property, let me spin around and we'll walk down here. I'm still working in here. I haven't done anything in here yet. We left all this because all my grandkids were young. They've all gone off to college almost, got one more. And we kept this as a parking lot. So I did all the parties here, birthday parties, holidays, everything, plenty of parking. Look at this. They could park anywhere and just, geez, we've had 20, 25 cars in here. We, we had a lot of people, well, maybe not 25, but we had a lot. They just park all over. And then if somebody had to leave, if they parked themselves in, then they would just ask somebody to move and it worked out really good. But now, Things have changed, and I don't think we're gonna have the parties that we used to. We could build a tunnel. I've got my dog kennel I wanna work on. I could build a tunnel down there. I don't know, I could build a tunnel anywhere. I like my wall. 
Hey, I was thinking once of a tiny house. I actually would rather get a fifth wheel than a tiny house if I was going to get something like that. Because a fifth wheel, you can move. A tiny house, you need all kinds of permits and everything for it. But the thing is, we could do it somewhere here. This is all going. So that's what my dilemma is. Where am I going to put it? And do I really need it? Oh, I could put it here and walk this way as a tunnel. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. That's why I'm throwing it at you. What do you think? What would be a good thing? Or do I just forget my view? I don't need it. And don't watch the deer anymore go through. I really enjoy watching them go through under the trees. They planted about 10 new trees all through there. And this is going to bring more birds because the birds will nest in those trees. A lot of them are pepper trees. They've got avocado trees there. I think they've got, I'm not sure if they've got acacias, jacarandas, different, there's ficus in there, there's olive trees in there, and that connects with our property too, that we have all those trees, that's our pepper tree up there, and we want to even get more trees. I think Gary's got some pecan trees down there, and that's the thing, they actually hang out. What would you do? Oh, there goes my fountain, the sun came out. Tell me what you think. Would you build a tunnel? Now, of course, if I wanted to, I could move some of these dog crates, but I just set them up. And I want to be able to get behind them. I've now planted more dragon fruit back there. I want to get more tree colored. I want to make a whole hedge of tree colored. I'm even thinking of doing more cuttings off the lemon verbena and planting another one in here. Since so many birds hide in that, the spice finches hide in it and feed in it. So I'm not sure yet because I do really want to get more tree color because that's food for us. And I use a lot of tree color. I make coleslaw out of it. You can make wraps out of it. You can make chips out of it. There's everything, you know, you can do with it. What do you think? Give me your ideas. Would you go with a tunnel or put the tunnel outside or wait? Because I told Gary, don't come running in here. I mean, yeah, I could put this in a tunnel, but... This is my potatoes. I harvest a lot of potatoes pretty soon. When all this dies back, I'll have purple potatoes. And then I've got white potatoes in there I really need harvest. And then I've got different things. Notice in here, I'm doing layers. So everything is in buckets. Nothing is really in the container, the raised bed itself. So I can lift everything out and move it if I wanted to, including the brassicas. I can do whatever I want. And then I've got some pots that I do nothing in there. So like this one's got a lot of powdery mildew because we're so damp in the morning still. I just throw that in there. Then when I water that, it feeds all the other plants because they still put feeder roots into that soil. They come out of the bottom. Remember, we need drain holes. And as long as the holes are on the bottom or even if it's on the side, but the roots can get out because there's soil or wood chips around it, they'll feed off of that. This is planted directly in there. Here I've got layers. Everything's in pots. I've got the forget-me-nots in the pot. I've got this emu bush in the pot, yet that emu bush is planted directly in there. I've got walking onions in a pot. See, I can lift it. Anyways, what do I do? Tell me, what would you do? I just love that we can garden in so many different methods, whether we plant directly in a container and all my soil is free. Not one red cent went into any of these. No potting soil at all. Just soil that has been breaking down because remember how I fill it, everything is scraps from the garden, just like nature does, just like it's doing it up on the hillside. Everything's falling. You leave it, it decays because only the top doesn't. And then all those trees, all those plants, are fed by nature. Nobody is feeding any of those trees that are growing. Not even that giant pepper tree that all the birds nest in. Nobody's feeding it. The only thing that sometimes they need, especially here in Southern California, a little help would be water. So anyways, going back to this, I wanna hear your thoughts. Would you go ahead and build a tunnel and forget about the deer and go find another place to sit? Or would you say, let's hold off and think about it because the tunnel's gonna be very permanent once it's built. And maybe see what I wanna do once I get in there, because I gotta get all those totes out. That I don't want. These are just nothing back here. These, yes, are set up up to this white one. But this is just stuff. 
And I'm going to move all those totes and then I'm going to trim this back, but I'm leaving it till it's finished for the birds, unless I get too anxious. And then I don't know what's going to be with the papaya. That's another thing. I'll have more room, kind of, if the papayas don't make it. I've kind of put my geraniums around there. I'm going to move that or at least empty it and start over because the papaya feeds off of this container, which has got holes on the bottom. And the geraniums, well, that was kind of dress it up a little bit. The tote that they broke through and they're, see how the roots are wrapped around and they go down into the soil? That was more to dress it up for me. But I don't know what's going to make it here and what's not going to make it. I know one is looking really good and the other ones are eh. We'll see as summer goes on. All right, well, I'll be anxious to read through and see what you think because this is really one of my favorite spots. Once I get this dead plant out, I'm working on that. That was a purple tree colored. See the other one back there? Here, this is something too for you to know. This is a purple tree colored and this one was. That one is pretty much in the shade. It's got a little extra shade when the sun goes down. This one was in the sunlight. I have found that purple tree colored for me in Southern California doesn't like full sun. That's why all the green tree colored, all these giant ones, this one, this one, they love full sun. But the purple is a little temperamental, gets too hot, too dry, and they die back. So I wanted to get some more purple tree colored in shade. Gary grows a lot of it, but remember his entire garden Underneath there is sunshade. See, I see a rabbit across the hill. And that's what I'll lose. Do you see the rabbit? I do. So tell me your thoughts. And remember, if you got purple tree colored and you're really hot in the desert, try to find more of a shady spot for it. And tell me, would you get rid of this spot? Little piece of heaven. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. And I hope I gave you some tips as we walked around and talked about this. Bye-bye. I love seeing the rabbits and stuff across the hill.